Hey everyone, it's Shannon and welcome back to the Also Archives. Today's video is being brought to you from Antigua, Guatemala. I'm here for the next four weeks doing a Spanish immersion program, um, but this video will not be about that just yet. Um, this video will be covering the review of my AMCAS application for medical school. So this video was um, a suggested video topic from one of my subscribers. Um, the only things that are marked out on my application are of course the identifying information, but everything else is um, going to be open to you all to look at. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope it's helpful to any pre-meds out there. Um, and yeah, please like and subscribe. Okay, so the very first page of your MCAS application will be basically your um, demographic and, ident and identifying information. So the first page is pretty straightforward. Okay, now, so once you get to page two of the application, you're gonna be asked to input any language information you have, as well as your um, disadvantaged status or explanation. So for me, um, I do believe that I qualify as a disadvantaged applicant just because of my, um, the fact that I'm a minority student of African-American um, culture, I guess. Um, so I put that in there as well as I talked about being a first generation college student in my family. So those were the things that I thought made me disadvantaged. But if you look on the AMCAS website, it'll tell you what the definition of a disadvantaged applicant is. So that way you can know for sure if you um, meet the criteria or not. Okay, so now on page three is mainly talking about your um, parents' information, um, you know, legal residence, education level, things like that. Um, in the column where it says um, first generation, that confused me because I thought that it would show up on its own once I put in that I'm a first generation college student, but it actually won't show up until your MCAS application is fully processed. So if that doesn't show up for you, don't worry about it. Um, once you submit and then your application goes through the approval and it's actually officially, officially submitted, that's when the first generation status will show up. Um, and then down, skipping down a little bit to um, institutional action. So for me, that is where I talked about um, the time that I was placed on academic probation, academic dismissal at um, my um, master's degree program. So in there, don't worry about it. Just be honest and explain what happened, what your GPA was, what what um, factors led to you becoming, um, led to you getting onto that probationary status and just be honest and upfront. And if you leave it blank, um, nine times out of 10, I would be afraid that they would ask me about it at an interview or something. So it's better just to put it out all on paper and um, let the schools make their own judgments about it. Um, but yes, it's better to just put it all out there and be honest and upfront from the beginning. Same goes for the felony explanations and uh, misdemeanor convictions. Both of those, just just be honest and upfront with the committee because they probably they will find out if there's something that they don't know, and that might be a detriment to your future um, success in the medical school application process. Okay, so if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know that I took. I had a post back master's program. I've taken several additional um, undergraduate courses at community college and at my local universities. So, and all that's on top of my undergraduate degree. So pages four through eight, I believe, are all um, academic coursework. So all these pages um, you will use to kind of break down um, all of your coursework, the credits of each course, and what grades you earned in each course. So this is the most tedious portion of your application, but it's also the most important because you want to make sure everything is correct because these pages will dictate the GPA calculations, your science GPA, your overall GPA, etc. Um, so take your time with this portion. Make sure you double check it twice when you're inputting each course because the, the minuses and pluses do add up and they do make a difference. Um, but of course, yours may not be as long as mine. Yours might be longer than mine, um, but just take your time with it. I think I did mine over a process of like 
three days, four days, just to kind of give my brain a break from inputting the same stuff. Um, but you just want to make sure it's done correctly. Just a side note, I did apply to osteopathic schools as well. And the application is pretty much the same for um, osteopathic and allopathic schools, except they use a different um, application software. Um, but for me, regarding the, the inputting of all of your coursework, the um, osteopathic application process is way simpler. They actually have an option where you can pay, I think it was like $50, that might be, it might have been less than that, but I would say like an average of $50, $60 to send in your transcripts and the application software people will input your classes and your GPAs and stuff for you. I did that um, just to kind of make sure that it was absolutely correct and then I used that GPA calculation to make sure that my AMCAS GPA um, calculations were correct. Um, so, so yeah, that's just a little tidbit about the um, DO application. So this will be the page where you're going to have all of your GPAs laid out. And what they do is they break them down for each year of college. So BCPM is your science GPA. And then AO is all of the other coursework that you've taken. So any um, like literature, psychology, things that don't qualify as basic sciences. And then the total GPA is your overall GPA. Um, but I've highlighted the ones that I think are like the most important for me. So that was my post back undergraduate GPA, my cumulative undergraduate GPA, and then grad school. Yeah, and then down at the bottom, the MCAT scores. I took the MCAT twice. So the first score is the, the, the second score on the list. So I took my MCAT test a year apart. So the first one I got a 495 total and the second one I got a 506 and then as you scan across the columns it'll show you the breakdown of each section the percentile rankings and um, just more numbers more math um, so yeah that's pretty much how this one this page goes to me it's like the most important page that's probably the page that the schools kind of like flip through first to get to and see kind of where you stand academically um, what your your um, strong points and your weak points were and whether or not you improved. Um, so again, this is why inputting all your coursework is so important because a small decimal point can make a huge difference in um, putting you at a 2.8 versus a 3.0. Okay, so the next few pages for me are all about my experiences. So when you do your AMCAS application, it's like the most daunting part, I think, because it's a lot of writing and it's a lot of essays. So to me, this was the time where I kept everything as general as possible. Um, even though I was talking about specific experiences, whether it was research, volunteering, shadowing, random experiences, I kept it very general and very short, sweet to the point. Um, I used my personal statement, which I'll talk about next. I used my personal statement to get more in depth with all the experiences that I discussed. Um, so I believe they let you put in like 10 experiences. Don't quote me because I might be wrong. Um, but I think you can input at least 10 experiences covering, you know, volunteer community service, um, um, extracurricular activities, research, et cetera, et cetera. However, out of those 10, you have to select three, I believe, that are the most meaningful experiences. So those, I think, are um, should be the ones that were the most impactful, where you learn the most about yourself, um, just something where it'll kind of stand out for the committees. So one of my most meaningful experiences was... Um, Okay, scuba diving. I said that scuba diving was meaningful, for example, because it allowed me to um, expose myself to various diverse cultures. I get to travel to new places and meet people that I would have never met before. Um, I think I talked about in my essay, um, diving and spending time with people who are of different religions, different languages, different backgrounds and beliefs. And all these things have um, really helped me to become a open-minded and and um, just overall respectful of different cultures. And that in turn will influence my um, 
influence my skills as, as a future physician and medical student. Um, clearly, scuba diving has nothing to do with medicine, but um, there are ways that you can you can reflect and then find ways that your experiences do tie into medicine. Even if it doesn't seem like it will, um, you can find a way to make it work. It will ask you to input a contact person. I think it looks good when you have those contact information it's in there. It just makes it seem like, like it's a legitimate experience that you actually participated in. So now on to the personal comments, which is your personal statement. So the personal statement for me was was very difficult to write. So um, try to go from an, from an experience that you have and then tie in or weave in how that will make you a good physician in the future. So that's what I did. I think that that, that makes your essays more emotional and it makes them more enjoyable for the reader to where they want to keep reading. So um, use a lot of emotion, dig deep and really like introspect about what you want to write about because committees read these essays all day long and you want to make sure that there's something in there that shows them like, yeah, I'm a real person. I have real experiences, real emotions. I've had real struggles and this is why I want to be a doctor. Also for all these essays, I suggest making a Google Doc and just typing all your essays in that and then transfer them over to the application just because you never know when something might glitch and then you lose all your stuff. And then below your personal statement will be all of your letters of recommendation. So I had one, two, three, four, five, six letters of recommendation. I think I had three from um, academic professors, two, one from a research preceptor, and then two from clinical experiences. And then the final page of your application will list out all of your schools that you want to apply to. My suggestion for picking out schools is to definitely purchase the, um, the MSAR bank thing that allows you to look up the GPAs, the accepted student ratios, demographics, where everybody's from, how many students they accept, blah, 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 about each school. You can select schools that are within your GPA range and in MCAT range, things like that. But for me, I've looked at more so what the school offers, um, what their students say about the school, um, the relationships between faculty, the um, mission statements, I, I, I put more weight into those aspects than I did about the MCAT and GPA. Just because the first time around when I applied, I did solely by MCAT and GPA. And for me, I think I was overlooking, like, is that school a good fit or not for me? This was like a quick overview um, of each page, but if there's anything specific, more so about how I chose schools, why I took so many courses, you know, anything like that, please leave a comment, email me, whatever is easiest for you, and I will absolutely get back to you. Um, so again, I hope it was useful. Um, please like and subscribe and um, stay tuned for future videos. Probably next up will be my Guatemala um, Spanish immersion vlog. So that should be a good one. So stay tuned.